Well, thank you for joining with us on a special edition of Praying Through the Psalms. And as of the time I'm making this video, Israel is at war. And I trust that you will use this video not only to go through a psalm together, and we're going to go through Psalm 83, but use this video to assist you in praying for Israel and praying for what's happening there right now. I'm going to give you the names of our missionaries there. They're serving in Ramallah, which is in the West Bank, a, a very troubling place, and yet they're winning people to Jesus, born-again believers, and they started a church there in Ramallah that is preaching the Word of God and, and seeking to bring people to Jesus. They started another church over near Tel Aviv that because of what's happening in Israel right now, they're not able to get to. But we want to be praying for those believers, both uh, Palestinian people coming to Jesus and Jewish Israeli people coming to Jesus. That's what we want to see is people coming to Jesus, being born again, being saved. But right now there's a war and there's been much suffering and much pain. And it's just a horrific time when uh, Hamas attacked out of Gaza killing innocent civilians of all ages, armed, unarmed people, just civilians. And it was just a horrible attack. And now as of the time I'm making this video, Israel is preparing a military response. And so it's time to pray. You see, armies can defeat armies, but only a praying church can hold evil in check. The spiritual forces that are at work behind the scenes, only a praying spirit-filled people can uh, address that battle. And that's what I'm calling on all the people who are watching this video to be engaged in. Let's be engaged in prayer and spiritual warfare. Spend more time on your knees praying than you do watching the news. Let's gather together in person. I'm calling everyone to come on Wednesday nights to pray and seek God. These are perilous times we're living in, and we need to be a people of prayer. And Psalm 83 is a great starting place when we talk about praying for Israel under attack. Now, the setting of Psalm 83, we know that it was written by, it just says a, a prayer of, a, a psalm of Asaph, uh, a song of uh, song of psalm by Asaph. Asaph was a worship leader, and the Levites were singers there in the temple. Now, wh when was this psalm, Psalm 83, written? Well, we're not sure, but many scholars, including one Derek Kidder, that I'm going to be referring to here, uh, he believes, I think there's good support for this, that this psalm was written in the time of Jehoshaphat. Because there was a confederacy against Jehoshaphat, attacking them, threatening them. And uh, there's a beautiful prayer. Read 2 uh, Chronicles 20. He basically cries out and says, We don't have the resources to fight this, but Lord, our eyes are upon you. There was a whole conspiracy of peoples against Israel at that time. Well, in this Psalm 83, there are ten different nations or people groups listed that are conspiring together to wipe out Israel. And is that not what's been happening throughout history? And perhaps what is even going on today? A people bringing a concerted effort, a conspiracy, trying to wipe this nation out. Before I read the psalm, I want to remind you that it is basically a spiritual conflict that we're involved with. You see, we see armies and nations and politicians and leaders and kings but there is an evil behind the scenes that can only be addressed by a praying church. This is a spiritual warfare. Ephesians chapter 6 comes to play. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Well, uh, if Kidder is right in that this was written at the time of Jehoshaphat, what a great prophetic parallel it is, Psalm 83. Because these nations were conspiring against Israel, but God used... Uh, an Asaphite to bring a prophecy that said you're not going to have to fight this battle, this one's the Lord's. And the sons of Levi came out in front of the army singing and praising God and God supernaturally moved and the enemies began to fight one another, set ambushments against one another and Israel won a tremendous victory that day because it was a spiritual battle behind the scenes. And so this is, must be the focus of our praying 
defeating the evil that is behind the scenes. Read Revelation 12, the dragon that is out to, to, to just wage war on the woman who gave birth to the man-child. That's a picture of Israel bringing forth the Messiah, Jesus. And Satan, that old dragon who couldn't defeat the coming of Christ and the victory of Christ, he now turns his wrath upon the woman who represents Israel in that vision of Revelation 12. And so there's a spiritual entity behind all this, and we need to be a people at prayer. Let me give you the names of our missionaries there, Munir and Sharon Kakish. Also his son, their son, Michael, who uh, married a, a young lady who's now serving there with them, Jackie. And they have two children, Carmen and Lily. They're serving in a very troubled place, winning people to Jesus in a very troubled land, the Holy Land. Well, let's, let's pray. At the end of this video, we're going to play a video clip from a recent service where we're worshiping the Lord. And while that portion is playing and you're hearing the worship, I want you to be praying. So we're going to talk about Psalm 83, and then during the worship time, you be praying. Praying for Israel, praying for the Kakishas, praying for revival, praying for breakthrough. Praying that God would defeat the evil that is behind the scenes there. Let me read you Psalm 83. Uh, do not keep silent, O God, do not hold your peace, and do not be still, O God, for behold, your enemies make a tumult. Those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, quote, Come and let us cast them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. See, even in Jehoshaphat's day, there were people that wanted to wipe out Israel. Notice they said, let's cut them off from being a nation. We don't want Israel to be a nation anymore. We don't even want people to remember Israel. Well, Israel, the name Israel comes from Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and he was one of the patriarchs, and from him came the people we now call uh, the Jewish nation, Israel. He wrestled with God, and his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Well, let's go on with this prayer. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and of the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites, Agibal, Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. So if it's Moab and Ammon coming against Jehoshaphat and the people of God, these other groups have now consulted together with them. It's a conspiracy to wipe out Israel. Same thing happens today. Here's the prayer. Deal with them as with Midian, as with Sisera, as with Jabin at the brook Kishon, who perished at Endor, who became the refuse on the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, yes, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, let us take for ourselves the pastures of God for possession. Let's take their land is what they're saying. Oh my God, make them like the whirling dust, like the chaff before the wind. As the fire burns the woods, as the flame sets the mountains on fire, to so pursue them with your tempest and frighten them with your storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be put to shame and perish that they may know that you, whose name alone is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. Wow, what a great prayer. Basically, he's not just praying for military victory. I'm sure he was praying for victory. And the story in 2 Chronicles 20 is a great testimony of the power of God to intervene. Read it, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And as the, uh, the singers went up before the uh, uh, army, they began to praise the Lord and God sent the victory. And this is what we're praying for, that God would intervene, that God would bring the victory. But notice the, the motive here. Two motives. Uh, they, bo they go together, look at verse 16, fill their faces with shame. That means defeat them. When they were defeated in those days, they were in shame when they were defeated. It says, fill their faces with shame, but here's what, that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let's pray that God would move in such a powerful way there in the Holy Land of Israel, that people on all sides, everyone involved with anything over there would come to seek the Lord, that they may seek your name. Well, we know the name above all names, the name of Jesus. 
You want to know who the true and living God is? He's the God who came in the person of Jesus, born right there in Bethlehem to be the Savior, not only of the Jewish people, but the Savior of the world. And so that they might seek your name. He prays for victory so that those who are defeated would seek the name of the Lord. And then he, so he goes on in verse 17, Let them be confounded and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be put to shame and perish. That, here's the second reason, that they may know that you, whose name alone is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. Oh God, let there be intervention there. Let there be victory there. That everyone involved would know that you are the true and living God. That you are the God over all the earth. And that you sent your son Jesus to be the savior of the world. This is what we need to be praying for. That God would intervene. That God would send an outpouring of his spirit. A revival in that land. Yes, stopping the evil. Stopping the, the suffering. Pray for the comfort of those who are in such deep grief right now. Pray for those hostages that they will be set free. And for the families of the hostages that are gripped in such fear and dread. Oh, that we would have God intervene in a powerful way. Let's pray. Let's seek Him. Let's fast. Let's pray Psalm 83. That they would seek your name. That they would know that you, the true and living God, are the God of all the earth. This is what we want. We want everybody to know that Jesus Christ is the Creator, the Savior, the Redeemer, and the Lord of all. The King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And let's pray for God's people who are in a very tough place right now. Many hurting, many grieving, many suffering. But let's pray for God to break through in His power and for God to break through in His glory, that they may seek the name of the Lord, that they may know that you, whose name alone is the Lord, are the Most High over all the earth. Begin praying right now for the Kakishas. Begin praying right now for God's intervention in Israel. Begin praying right now for the hostages, and begin praying right now for the hurting and grieving. Begin praying right now for an end of this suffering and conflict. But begin to pray right now for an outpouring of God's Spirit that they would seek His name and that they would know that God alone is the true God. The God of Jesus. Jesus Himself. Now the worship music is about to play on this video, but as it is playing, as you're in an atmosphere of worship because of the worship music playing, you pray. You intercede. Pray with your understanding and pray in the Spirit. But pray for Israel. Pray for Jerusalem. Pray for the Kakishas. Pray for the churches there. Pray for God to intervene. Let's begin to pray now, even as that worship time begins. I trust in God, my Savior. 